It was hard, and I never did get over the things I've done in my past. But I have someone within me now, the Lord Jesus Christ, who takes care of me daily. He helps me to overcome the situations that I, I can't overcome. See, if I had tried to overcome the things in my past without the Lord, I would not even be in this building right now. Because they are so heavy. That burden would be so heavy. People want to fix things. Uh, they want to fix things. Little kids, you don't see them having to straighten a situation out. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. Not worry about straightening situations out. Let Him help you. Let Him come into your life. And He'll work things out for you. He truly will. He'll take care of you. He'll make a way of everything. He loves It's about love. It's about a love beyond understanding. It's beyond understanding why I've had things to happen in my life. It's a beyond understanding why I reacted to things that I reacted to in my life. I don't understand it, but I've got to get past it, and I've got to get over it. Uh, I tell you what we need to do. It's like little kids, you know how they'll be playing ball and doing things and stuff, and boy, just fall and maybe scuffer me and wind around there a little bit like they're hurt. But you know what they want to do? They jump right back up. They jump up and they take off a road down and shake the dust off from your past and move forward in His promises. See, He has got a host of promises for us. We have a heaven game. It's going to be a great, beautiful place. Revelations 5, 20 and 21 tells us all about it, how great it's going to be. We're going to carry maybe some things in our heart. We're going to have situations in our life, like I said just a second ago, that we have to deal with. But He is going to wipe every tear away from us someday. We can truly count on this. This is a promise. He's, he promises us that He will give us life. And life more abundantly. That's not just here on earth, but that's in heaven. See, there is a heaven. And there's a place that I'm counting on going to. I know I'm going to go, go to that place someday. So we have to. We have to. Be humble. See, I'm, I'm saying be humble before I'm saying forget your past. Because you know what? If you, if you don't humble yourself... You know, if you don't get pride out of the way, you're never going to get past it. You're never going to get past it. I don't care what anybody tries to tell you. There's only one way to heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. And we have to humble ourselves as a little child. We have to be as a little child that don't know right from wrong, but know that we depend upon one thing, and that's love. If we just depend upon the love the love, the true love, if we depend upon that love, He says He'll take care of you. In Isaiah, he ta if, if you're in the wilderness, I'll be there with you. If you're in the desert, I'll provide the river for you. That's what He says spiritually. Wherever we're at, He is right there in the midst. He'll always be there. He promises that. He promises that. Oh. Man, I, you know, before I was saved, and I don't want to get into a, a, a long testimony, but before I was saved, I was financially broke. I was, the marriage was, fight was broke. Everything was going the wrong direction. The love was broke. The love wasn't there. It wasn't there. But God, when I gave, when I humbled myself, when I got a hold of that pew when I was standing there that night, and God touched me when I, I don't want to use the word touch because I don't want to make it say I, I want to say that when I cried out to God right there, see, I wanted to change. That's what I want. That's talking about the word converting here. We need a change. I needed a change. I didn't like the way my life was going. There wasn't nothing I could do about it. It had got to the point that there was nothing I could do. And when I come to the altar, tears were flowing, heartbroken. Would not never took a step if I hadn't said, God help me. I'd have still been standing there holding on. Because Satan said, but somewhere in the way, if all we had to do is just say, God help me, He'll help you. He helped me come out of there and I went to that altar and I bowed down before a loving God. And I accepted true love into my life. 
as a humble child, didn't know nothing about it, had no idea what was going on with it, my life changed right then. Now, if I got out of there and strutted down through there with that chest up in the air, said, I'm going to do this because I want to marry the love of I'm going to do this because I, I want people to know that it ain't all my fault. I want people to think, hey, you're this or you're that. If I do that, just make a show of it won't work. I had to come as a humble little child. See, that's, that's the point when this scripture, when he's talking about there in verse, uh, verse uh, uh, 4, it says, Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatness in the kingdom of heaven. See, that word there is not for that little child. It's for us to understand that we need to come to him as a little child. In other words, we need to totally depend upon him. As a little child, as these little children run, Troy Mason, I hope he's a little grandbaby. That little baby's just content as it can be right there because it's being held by love. Something that cares for more, more for it than he does himself. And that's what God is, is about us. And it don't matter if you're saved right now or not. God still loves you. He loves you. He loves you more than anything. Verse 11 down here is in this same chapter it says, For the Son is man, a man is come to save that which is lost. That, he died upon that cross. He didn't die for the, the religious people, the up the up. He died for the lost. Realize that no one, every one of us, when we were born, we were born as a lost soul. His his most important thing is our souls. I didn't know that when I come to the altar. I didn't understand many things. I didn't understand, you know, just have faith. Just have faith. Me and my brother Adam talked the other night. Just have faith, you know. That's what people would say. Just, just have faith in God. And it, meant, it is a good thing. But let me tell you something. You've got to accept love. That's, that's the greatest gift. You've got to accept love before you can have anything. Once the love comes into your heart, then you'll the faith will enter in also. Because let me tell you, it's a free gift too. It wasn't about faith when I walked down that aisle. It was about the love. The love that I needed. Something that I didn't have. Something I didn't understand. Then faith came. Faith came with that. That was a gift. That was a gift from God. Believe and see now, and and there is a lot of people that's grown up in church no bad that's been taught and they understand the faith and love and all the great gifts that, that, that are presented to the greatest faith, love, and hope, the greatest gifts that that, that that God has given us. God saying that love is the greatest. See, we learn those things if we're growing up. But let me tell you something, ten years ago I didn't know nothing about faith and hope. And love. I thought I did. But boy, when I, when I was standing there and I know how bad a shape I was in and I needed to change, I reached out. I came and received love. As a humble child, I wanted that more than anything in the world. A change in my life. To be converted. John 3.3 3 says, when Nicodemus came to him, you must be born again. That's a spiritual rebirth. We must be spiritually reborn. Let me tell you why we need to be spiritually reborn. It's because there's a spirit within us. Our soul is within us. And we're either being led. You can't have two masters. We're either being led by God or we're being led by Satan. Now that's the way it is. I know that's hard. But see, it, a lot of the mistakes we made in our life and a lot of the wrongdoings I made in my life wasn't my doing. Yes, I was the body. I was maybe the person. But I can look back and know how Satan used me against others. Satan's got a grip on people today for others and things. I'm telling you what, it's Satan. And if, if, if those... And, and, and I'll tell you, a lot of them have gotten into a point 
where they think it's the only way. They think that there's no way of getting away from it. They don't think that they'll ever get past that situation. And the only thing they can do is desire it more. Why is it? Because there is a spirit of Satan within them. That was what was in me. I hope everybody understands me what I'm saying. It's not a place you want to be. Ask any of them. It's not a place you want to be. And I just use drugs, for example. Broken marriages, finances, everything. It's not a place we want to be. God took things away from me his very first day. He took gambling out of my life right off the bat. So already my financial life was starting in the right direction. It took me five years. I want to say this because it's not like you're going to come to the altar and boom, it's instant. But there will be instant events. If you come as a humble little child, you'll feel the presence of the Lord in your life. You've got to come that way. I've seen people come before and not really, really have that humbleability about them as a little child. He wants us to come as a little child. You've got to come with just pour it out to Him. Pour it out to Him. Five years it took me. Took the Lord. Not me. But it took the Lord five years. And no, I ain't got a big bank road. Live week to week. But praise God, I'm not in the shape I was in. Probably $20,000 worth of stuff that I couldn't even come up with. He took care of it. All because of sin. All because of sin in my life. Because of Satan had put me in a place to where I was destroyed. I can remember... Boy, when Mary got saved two nights before me, I never traded for nothing in the world. The, two, the, the second greatest event in my life was when Mary gave her heart to the Lord. The first is when I gave my heart to the Lord. Praise God. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that day. I was scared to death. I don't know what was going on. What's she doing? doing that, you know? What's she doing? How am I going to act around her now? All these habits that I've got. Here she is. And boy, she is. She was good to me. She helped me through it. Let me tell you, two days later, I went to the altar. I mean, because I felt the presence of that love. She showed me a love that she probably hadn't been able to show me for years because of who I was. But she showed me a love in just a two short days of love. She wanted, see, she wanted to change too. She wanted a better life too. You can have a better life if you accept Jesus into your life. I promise you, you can have a better life. Two years later, I know 